What is up guys, welcome to Vintage Genetics, where it is all about classic bodybuilding and as you notice I am in a different gym right now called the Dutch Mecca of bodybuilding. There's a lot of pictures of Arnold, classic bodybuilders on the walls and it has been, you know, the owner of this gym is actually the one who will be hosting the competition this weekend where I will be doing a guest posing. So it was nice to really do a workout here before I do the guest posing there. And the machinery here is pretty awesome as well. As you can see, I'm doing a seated row. Really want to work on that back thickness. So I'm really going to work a lot of rowing movements when I'm doing the back. Minimum pull down movements, but a lot of rowing movements because they both work the thickness, but also the width if you use full range of motion. So today I'm using quite a lot of hammer strength machines. Um, right when I got back from my competition, I did a very heavy leg workout and I kind of felt it in my lower back because I was really happy to finally be able to crush it on the legs again. And actually during a leg press, a wide stance leg press, I kind of hurt, well, not really hurt, but I kind of felt it in my lower back, so I immediately stopped. Now I don't feel it anymore, but I don't want to aggravate it by doing any heavy barbell exercises right now. So the next best thing is some hammer strength exercises. As a bodybuilder, you don't want to unnecessarily injure yourself, especially when I want to make use of my rebound right now. And I will make a video quite soon about my rebound goals and my future classic physique goals. You heard it. I will be doing that class, but more about that in another video. So I just did a low row on the hammer strength, really hammering those lower lats, which I, is something I need to improve on. And this high row actually works the middle back and it goes all the way down to the lower back. It really follows the path that the muscle has on your back. So the lats doesn't work in a straight line. They don't work you know, like a bench press, not even your chest works in a straight line, but it actually works in like a curve, like you see right here. So the muscle is contracting all the way from the top to the bottom using full range of motion. You will hit muscle fibers that you normally do not hit when you do a regular barbell or bent over row. So do combine machines like this with exercises such as a barbell or dumbbell, because otherwise you might not be able to complete your back with all those specific little muscles that are able to grow to a much bigger size, which is something that I need to work on for sure. So here I couldn't actually stretch all the way up. So I sat a little bit back to be able to stretch the lats and then squeeze the lower lats as hard as possible. And now we're doing the lat pull down behind the neck. And the reason I'm doing it behind the neck and you can actually see it in the next clip is I'm actually able to contract the rear delts and the traps and the back thickness a lot better compared to when I pull the bar in front of my head. So the moment that the camera shows the back of my back, the back of my back, you can see my rear delt right there contracting my shoulder blades, blades retracting. And this means that that portion of the back is being worked and the thickness is being added on. And that is not the case as much when you have the bar in front of your head. So if you have a lot of back width and not a lot of back thickness, I would advise doing the lat pull down behind the head. And and this is a special exercise that you don't see a whole lot, but I really like it. It is for the rear delts, kind of like a face pull, but I like to call it a rear delt pull down because you're doing the exact same machine, the lat pull down machine using the exact same bar. But this time you lean back a little more and you look at the bar and pull it to your eyes and then you automatically contract the rear delts and trust me guys you want to work on those rear delts to get a complete back get a complete shoulder development get less shoulder injuries and look awesome during the side chest if you want to look thicker from the side doing rear delt exercises is certainly something you have to do and the volume here is a little higher 12 to 15 reps instead of 10 to 12 to refill up that small muscle with a lot of blood and then it already is time for the biceps and 
I really like this machine, a preacher curl machine. And if you look at the handles right there, you can either grip it pretty wide or pretty narrow. And I really like the narrow or close grip because that enhances the outside of your bicep, AKA the bicep peak. And that is always something you want to work on no matter how high your peak is, unless you have very short bicep heads, then you should do more hammer curls to try and create an illusion that lengthens them. But anyway, as you can see right here, full range of motion going all the way down, but not over stretching the biceps because that can actually create some injuries. So don't over stretch it, but go all the way down. So you stretch, you feel the stretch in the biceps and then go all the way up and contract it as hard as you can. As you notice when I'm going up, I'm holding it there for about half a second to be able to remove the momentum from that little motion and to be able to put the tension on the biceps to the max. And then we're doing the arm blaster dumbbell curls. There's actually an arm blaster in this gym, which makes it even more old school, which is awesome. And when I saw it, I just had to use it. I haven't been using it often enough in my opinion. So right here I'm doing some dumbbell curls with two dumbbells at the same time. It really does feel different compared to a regular dumbbell curl. And here I'm doing it one arm at a time because that actually makes me able to concentrate on the contraction of the biceps a little more. So what you want to do, what the arm blaster actually does is keep the tension on the bicep just a little longer because the higher you can pull up your arm without using your shoulder, the more you can actually contract the bicep, the harder the contraction and the arm blaster actually holds your arm forward and up just a little bit so that the contraction and the stretch are radically different compared to a regular dumbbell curl. So this definitely is something I recommend to do if you can get an arm measure yourself. And then the last exercise of the day, the rope hammer curls. This is an exercise I would recommend people do if you have short bicep heads. This is to really work on the brachialis. You can see the little bump in between my biceps and my triceps. If you build that one up, you will build the bottom muscle laying beneath the biceps, increasing the thickness and actually creating an illusion of more length. Anyway, guys, that was the video of today. Nice and quick, quite a lot of volume. I will be doing my guest posing this weekend. We'll record as much as possible. And after that, I finally won't be as busy anymore. And you guys will see so much more content, nutrition, tutorials, posing tutorials, training tips, Q and A's, etc. Put your video ideas down here. I will write them down. I still got a lot of ideas that I want to show you. And you know, I will show you everything because I have time for it right now. And don't forget guys, don't forget to stay golden.